guys, Ben here, 100M man, and pretty excited today for reasons that will be disclosed later. This morning I want to talk about the need to really embrace an identity and it's not as a result of any particular conversation I've had recently. I actually jotted down some notes for a new book I'm working on the other day. And I thought it was relevant, especially at this time where I am in my life. Share a little bit about my learnings, but also put it into context for those people that are watching and utilizing the words, recommendations, concepts, and my own beliefs in their own sporting practice. I'm referring to identity because one thing that I've found sport or training or any amount of time away from people offers is reflection. And it can be pretty scary as a lone athlete, and I'm not reflecting on me in this sense, a lone athlete who is under very, very tight control with perhaps the Olympics looming over them to feel very isolated and to introduce an element of self-talk that doesn't support strong enough character. Now, we all act differently when under duress, when stress is applied so much and people meet or are confronted with a, a tipping point, a stress breaking point. And some practitioners say that this is where we learn the most. Once we've gone through that breakthrough, once we've hit that wall or that barrier, my world, I'm not actually sure we need to reach that level of breaking point in order to rebuild. Of course, people that have gone through that process will identify and state that it was the turning point in their life, and I agree with them. However, if you're yet to explore or identify your boundaries, then I've mentioned it before, but I'm not sure that actually you need to go beyond that breaking point. All the time that you're working in alignment with legacy, with truth, with honesty, acting in the present moment, and a very, very clear over your identity. Because once you've cleared out all of the rubbish about the perceived value of who you're meant to be, the perceived value of a reflection. Once you've broken away all of those ties, there's no characters in play. What you start to do then is work very clearly or with a clear mind as to what you're meant to be doing. Your focus levels will literally quadruple within minutes. Is that a hard moment that people seem to talk about a lot and what I've spoken about actually in How to Change Your Life, that moment of where everything just falls into place and you actually go, oh, that's why. Oh, why haven't I thought this before? And that is the realisation of acting in a field, I don't want to say body or mind, but is in a, an energy field which is congruent with where you want to be and what you want to do. Now, to get to that place is a completely different story. To get to that place, you've got to understand the lies, the misinformation, perhaps even the lack of guidance that you've been giving yourself for X number of time. Now, I just, I said I'd reflect back. When I left the forces 
a long time ago now, I didn't really know who I was. I thought I knew who I should be, but I didn't really know. So I kind of just signed up to a way of living that I thought was acceptable. I became a car salesman. I That didn't pay particularly well. I didn't support that lifestyle or even the most basic of lifestyles. So I went and started scrubbing dishes as well. Then I worked as a security guard as well. And at one stage, for about eight months, I had three jobs just to put food on the table and pay my bills. Then my wife fell pregnant, and it was one day while scrubbing dishes, my hands in the soapy water that I said that, you know, I've got to do something about this. This is not, this is not me. This is not where I want to be or what I want to be doing. I don't want to be communicating with life in this way. So I made a vow to myself to become selfless and start acting in a way that was supportive to self. And I said yesterday, it can be you can alienate certain environments, certain people, and that happened incredibly quickly. And then from there, I started selling cars more, so left those two other jobs. Then there was an opportunity for me to go and work as an estate agent, of which I did. Got all of my qualifications in the estate agency industry, and within three years had set up, owned and sold, just before the recession, uh, an independent estate agency chain, which is still operating today. So the business model was very, very stable. And then I started lecturing in business and psychology and performance related sectors. And from there, I've specialized in different fields. Now, the reason I'm sharing this with you is there was a stage in my life where I was stuck and this might resonate with someone that's watching this. You're at a crossroads where you know that things can't go on for much longer following that certain suit, but you don't know what else to do. If you're halfway through a training program, your coach leaves, or you've got a large event coming up and you're not aligned perfectly with that self, with that direction, with that identity which is supportive, and that's where the niggles come in. That's where the brain starts playing games with you, your thoughts, and where self-doubt starts to come in because you're not in alignment. When I had my hands in soapy water, I was not in alignment with self and the communication internally was very, very poor. What did I do to get out of it? Well, I made the choice to do something about it. I made the choice to change. And it's been a long journey to get to this point. We're talking 15 years plus, specialising in an industry, working every day to build and help other people. So it's not something that comes easily, lightly or, or freely. It's something you have to invest a lot in, not only time and effort, but also the financials that are required as a result. And I'm sharing this with you today because I think it's important that we align ourselves, that we think about the bigger picture, we think about the internal happiness. I actually worked with a, uh, a team sport, a guy in the US, a few years ago now that had been benched a couple of times due to an element of misalignment. Once we established that identity, once we established who actually he was, he found himself actually not being put on the bench because he no longer had to be concerned about who was who he was acting out, who he was trying to be in front of his coaches, his peers, the media. So it removed him from that fear of rejection, that fear of the unknown, that fear of anything because he no longer had 
had to play a character because he was the person he wanted to be. He was demonstrating the true identity of self. And as I've said before, you can only hide within that place for so long, especially if you're in the media limelight or you're under duress. That true person will come out. That true identity will come out. It's making sure that that true identity is something that you're quite happy to share with the rest of the world. And as I said, it doesn't matter if you're an Olympic athlete or just a local club player. When the pressure's applied and you're at that limiter, you want to make sure that nothing comes out that you've been hiding or suppressing for a long time because that's when you'll break. That's when you'll go beyond. So, that's it for this morning. As always, please remember to subscribe, sign up to our newsletter for more tips and advice. If you're struggling in your particular field, then there's some availability in my coaching coming up in the next eight weeks, six weeks time. A couple of slots as I come to the end of a, uh, working with a certain project. So if you're interested, or you feel that perhaps you could benefit from a few one-to-one -one sessions, then remember to head over to the website 100mman.com and apply using the coaching button. For now, peace out, be safe.